Hello. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Safari browser to edit your HTML and CSS right in the browser so that you can design on the fly. And I'm going to start with a very simple index.html file that just has a title and an H1 heading with a CSS rule for that to set the font family to Arial. In the body, I've got that H1 heading and then a paragraph with an ID of main content. I've gone ahead and loaded that file into my page. So first I'm going to open up the developer console using the icon right here in my toolbar. And you can see that it opens into the elements tab showing me the DOM, the document object model that the browser creates when it loads the page. And I've got the sidebar open so that I can see both information about the nodes that I've got selected as well as the styles associated with elements in the page. So you can see that I've selected the heading. So I'm seeing the styles associated with that heading. And right down here is the style that I defined in the file in my CSS rule. You can see that here. And in, for the paragraph, I don't have any rules for the paragraph that I defined in the page, so there's no properties there yet. So one of the first things I wanted to show you that you can use to easily edit and test your JavaScript code in the page is this equals dollar sign zero. And this is a feature that was recently added to both Chrome and Safari. It looks a little bit different in Chrome. In Safari, it's equal dollar sign zero, and in Chrome, you'll see it shown as equal equal dollar sign zero. But the functionality is basically the same, and that is that when you select an element in the elements tab, then that assigns that element to the variable dollar sign zero. And so what that means is if I jump over to the console or I jump down here to the quick console and type dollar sign zero, it shows me that the value of dollar sign zero is this heading that I've selected up here in the DOM. And if I select the paragraph, then I will see that dollar sign zero is now the paragraph. So each item that you select is assigned to dollar sign zero as the most recent selected item in the DOM. If you have previously selected an item, that gets assigned then to dollar sign one and dollar sign two and so on. You can think of it as a stack. The most recently selected item is at the top and it's dollar sign zero. The next most recently selected item is next in the stack as dollar sign one and so on. So if I select paragraph, then the paragraph gets moved to dollar sign zero and the heading gets moved to dollar sign one. Now I can use these variables to manipulate the elements just like I would if I said document.getElementById and got say the paragraph from the DOM using its ID main content. So you can think of dollar sign zero and dollar sign one as a shortcut to accessing the elements that you have selected in the DOM using the element tab. So let's change the content of the P, the paragraph using dollar sign zero, and so we can just assign a new value to the inner HTML property. So I've assigned a new value to the paragraph using this alias for the paragraph dollar sign zero because dollar sign zero represents the paragraph. And you can see that it's updated the content of the paragraph in the page. Now, of course, this only temporarily updates the paragraph in the DOM. It doesn't actually change what's in my file at all, which is still this is a paragraph. So if I reloaded the page, I would see this is a paragraph again. Let's try updating the heading. Uh, we know that the heading is assigned to dollar sign one. We can see that right here. So if I say dollar sign one dot inner HTML equals I can change the value of the heading in the same way. I'm going to reload the page, go back to what we originally had and get rid of this quick console. And you can see that the exact same thing works in the console. If I switch over to the console, now you can see that dollar sign zero contains the heading because that's the item I have selected over in the elements tab. So using those quick variables or aliases is one way to make edits in your page without having to edit your file and reload the file. 
and it's a good way to quickly test out manipulating DOM elements on the fly. Another way that you can modify your page on the fly is to just change the content by double clicking on it and editing it. And you can do that in the elements tab. So I can change the value of my heading just by double clicking on it, typing new content in and hitting return. And you can see that that updated the content in the page. And again, that doesn't update the content at all in my file, which doesn't get changed. All it's doing is temporarily updating the content of the page. I can do that for the paragraph as well. And you can see that the content of the paragraph has been updated. So that's a quick and easy way to work on your page to manipulate the content while you're trying to figure out what your design is going to be without having to go back and edit your file. And if you want to save the changes that you've made, all you have to do is select the HTML element and copy that on the Mac doing uh, just a command C. And then you can paste that into a text file and it will paste the new content into that file. So that way, if you want to keep the changes that you've made, you can do that easily. Let's take a quick look at how you can modify CSS on the fly as well. I'm going to select the H1 heading again. And you can see that over here on the right hand side, we have three different panels for looking at the styles applied to the H1. The style attribute, that would be set if we had added a style to the H1 heading in the element itself. So for instance, if I added color red here, and I can just click on that and type it in, you can see that that corresponds to a style attribute on the H1 heading. However, let's get rid of that. Let's look at the, the second section here, and that corresponds to the style that I've defined in the HTML file that I wrote and loaded into the page. So if I make changes to this section, then it's like I'm modifying the CSS in my style tags in the file. And so if I add color red here, then any H1 heading in the file is going to get the color red because this is going to apply to all H1 headings, unlike the style attribute here, which would apply to the selected H1 element. So you can see that I just clicked and typed in a new property, which assigned the color red for the H1 heading, and it immediately updated the style of the element in the page. So again, this is a really great way of testing t styles on the fly. This last section is the user agent style sheet, and this is defined by defaults in your browser. So I can't actually change those or edit, add to them. But anything I can, I do up here will, could potentially override those styles. Let's try another style. I'm going to try adding font weight normal. And you can see that that is overriding the default user agent style, which sets font weight to be bold. So by setting font weight to be normal in the style in here for all H1 headings, uh, I've updated the style of the heading in the page and overridden the font weight in the user agent style sheet. Now, a quick and easy way to test my changes and see if I really like them is you can toggle these on and off easily just by clicking this little blue checkbox. So that's a quick overview of how you can edit your content and your style directly in the browser to work on the design of your page before you're committed to a final design. Makes it easier to experiment with things and try different things right in the browser.